Welcome to episode 195 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at SellingYourScreenplay.com. Today I'm interviewing Spanish screenwriter and director Mateo Gill. He wrote the original Open Your Eyes script, which starred Penelope Cruz and went on to be made in this country as Vanilla Sky. We talk about his latest sci-fi film called Real Live, so stay tuned for that interview. If you find these episodes valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast. And then just look for episode number 195. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I'll teach you how to write a professional log line and query letter and how to find agents and managers and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Again, if you'd like to take a look at that, it's all completely free. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So now let's get into the main segment. Today I'm interviewing screenwriter and director Matteo Gill. Here is the interview. Welcome, Matteo, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Thank you very much. So to start out, maybe you can just give us a quick overview of your background. Where did you grow up and how did you get interested in the entertainment business? Uh, I grew up in, uh, in the Canary Islands. Uh, they are a few islands uh, that belong to Spain, but they are in the north of Africa, the north coast of Africa. Uh, it's a very nice and quiet place. And uh, I don't know why, but I, I started liking movies very much when I was uh, an adolescent Mm -hmm. and then I discovered that there there was a figure called the director and another figure called the writer and I decided I wanted to do that. Okay, (laughs) so then then let's talk about some of those first steps to actually making this a career. Um, What was sort of that first break or those first, not even the first break, maybe take us up through that. What were those first things that you did? Did you start to write scripts? Did you start to direct little short films with your video camera? How did you actually transition from, hey, I'd love to do this to actually doing it on a professional level? Yeah, I was very lucky because uh, uh, when I was at the university, uh, the first year, I just met Alejandra Menavar in my class. He was a very smart and very talented uh, person. And we started making short movies with a very, very cheap video camera mm-hmm. and editing in the, in the, I don't know how to say it, in the, in the play machine at home. Yeah, yeah, the VCR. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> VCR. Yep. And um, that was all. Okay, perfect, perfect. And then were you submitting those to film festivals? How did that actually turn in from just you and your buddy making shorts to actually being paid professionally to do this? What were some of those steps? Were you submitting these shorts to agents? Were you submitting these short films to film festivals? Um, Were you showing them to producers? What were you doing with those short films to get you guys some recognition? Uh, The way at that time was uh, sending the the video uh, movies, the short movies to festivals uh, in Spain, mainly, and uh, that was all. There, there, there was some successful short movies by Alejandro, and then he, he made his first movie very soon when he was very young, and I started working for him and then for other people, and at the end I started directing myself. Perfect, perfect. So let's dig into um, Real Live. Maybe to start out, you can give us a quick pitch or a log line for what that film is all about. <sighs> If you want a short tagline, uh, I would say it's the story of the first man ever to be resurrected in the history of humanity. Okay, it's the first one. <laughs> yep, I think that sums it up well. So in, in the year can... 2085, I think. And maybe you can kind of tell us where this idea came from. Um, was it something you read in a magazine? Where was just sort of the genesis for this specific um, kernel of an idea? 
the idea for a life was a very old idea I had. Uh, actually, the idea came to me many years ago when I was writing with Alejandro Amenabar, uh, Open Your Eyes. It was a Spanish movie that the, the, they made uh, the remake called Vanilla Sky many years ago. And um, in that movie, cryonization was a, a, an important uh, thing in the story. And I was always asking myself, why in the future people would have any interest in resurrecting people from today? The first one, I understand that because uh, you, you would have a lot of curiosity about how he could feel, etc. But then what? All these people that was cryonizing uh, in our time, is it going to be really worth resurrected them in the future? That mm -hmm. was my, my question. And also I was asking myself, what for? What are you going to do in the future if you are resurrected? Yeah. You don't know anyone. You are not useful for anyone. Uh, mm -hmm. Why? What for? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's, that's a question that was uh, in the beginning of the story. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I'd love to talk about your writing process a little bit. Um, maybe you can kind of just detail some of the specifics of writing, you know, this script or just any of the scripts you've written in general. How much time do you spend um, doing an outline versus how much time do you spend opening up final draft and writing script pages? It depends very much on the kind of a uh, project you are involved. In this case, the writing, the proper writing of the first draft was very, very fast, about a month. Um, but I, I, I had been taking notes for a long time, thinking about the story for a long time, and, uh, and then I did some rewriting. Mm -hmm. But in the movie I'm doing now, I'm finishing now, uh, there was only just one draft. It was about two months and a half, three months, and that was all. Okay, okay. And what does your day look like when you're actually in the flow of writing? Do you spend like 12 hours a day writing, or do you spend, you know, two or three hours a day writing? What do those days look like during those, in this case, sounds like a month, or in the other script, two and a half months? The, 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 those days are hell, you know, because I, I spend <laughs> writing the whole day, the whole night, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's why I write quickly but you know I, I spend a lot of time taking notes in a very quiet manner mm -hmm. and then I write very fast the, the draft you know yeah, but yeah. then I rewrite it slowly again yeah so maybe you can talk specifically about Real Live re, and sort of the development process of that um, was this a, an assignment how, maybe we can just take a step back how did you get involved with this specific project in terms of being with the sci-fi channel did you write the script and then take it to the sci-fi channel did you pitch it to the sci-fi channel and then they said okay yeah we'll go ahead and make it maybe talk about that relationship a little bit you mean the sci-fi channel correct yeah oh it, 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 they bought the movie after making it. Okay, uh, okay, okay. That, that's, a, that's interesting. Okay, so then, then back us up a little bit. So then this was just a spec script. You wrote it, and then once you finished, then you decided to try and take it out to, um, to the various producers that you know? Yeah, they were, they were uh, Spanish producers. And the, this is a, a Spanish movie. It's a small movie. It's about three, four million euro uh, budget. And um, we made the movie here, but uh, we needed to do it in English because uh, that was the way to get money mm -hmm. to make the movie. And also I needed um, that the story happened in a county where cryonization is uh, an easy thing to do. Because if you cryonize yourself here in Spain, they are going to take your body to another country. Mm. If you want, but if you are in California, for example, you you are uh, taken to uh, to a storehouse yeah, there a warehouse in, California. in the desert. <laughs> warehouse, yeah. So um, I needed a place uh, that uh, they where they were um, speaking English people, but that uh, that I could um, shoot here in Spain in the Canary Islands, actually. 
So the the only place in the world I, I could think of was California because of the landscape. Yeah. So the whole movie is shot in Spain, but it, it, you can think it's it, it happens in California. Yeah, yeah. So let me just talk about your development process a little bit. Okay, so um, you've written this script, you've gotten the first draft. Maybe talk about how you get notes and how you react to those notes. Do you have a bunch of other writer friends that you'll send your scripts to and then get notes? Do you just trust your instincts? Do you have an agent? Do you have a producer friend? What is that development process? You have your rough draft. Then what do you do with that first rough draft that you have? I, I give my scripts to my friends, a few friends I have, just when it, when the first draft is completed, not before that. I take my notes, mm -hmm. uh, I, I do writing or even rewriting, and then when I think the story is good enough, I send it to a few friends, just a few of them. Okay. Because you cannot be bothering your friends all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 no kidding. Um, so let's talk about that. Okay, so now you've got the script done, and then you've started to send it out to some of these producers um, that you know. Maybe talk about that and those relationships. Who was ultimately the producer that went out and raised the the money for this film? Um, and maybe talk about that relationship and, and ultimately how you forged that relationship initially. I have to say that when I finished this script, I I abandoned it for two years, more or less, okay. because um, I wasn't any sure. It was a very personal kind of uh, writing. It was a very risky story to tell. And I, was very, I wasn't very sure. But after two years, more or less, I decided to give it to the producers of Blackthorn. That was my last movie, a Western. Um, thinking they are going to throw the pages to my face, but they they liked the story and, and they say they said okay let's do it and that was all. Mm -hmm. And so this company, tell me the name of this company that you sent it to. Arcadia Motion Pictures. Okay, it's a a, a company settled in Barcelona, Spain. Okay, and then back us up a little bit. How did you initially, like years ago with your other movie, how did you initially get in touch with this company? I'm basically trying to get at, you know, because a lot of screenwriters are going to be wondering, well, how do you get those relationships with these production companies that want to read your material or are willing to fund your movie? So just take us a few yeah. steps back to that initial contact. How did you initially get in touch with this company and, and get to know them? This company get, uh, got involved in the movie I made previously, Blackthorn, um, because they started like a financing company, not a producing company. But they, they, they got involved in my movie and they, I met them. And uh, thanks. Um, then I met them and uh, we, we get very well together, so I, I sent them this script. Yeah. But you know, in Spain, the good thing of working in Spain is uh, that this is very small, we know each other. Uh, I feel comfortable in this world. Mm -hmm. You have to make small movies, you know, yeah. but I feel comfortable. Th this, I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't know how to move in Los Angeles, for example. No idea how to do it. And I'm, and I'm curious, um, are there other companies? So you sent it to this one company, they liked it. I always like to just get a sense of sort of the scope of what writers are doing. Did you send, did, did you send it to a bunch of other Spanish production companies as well? And maybe they weren't interested or maybe they gave this company had the most passion for it or, or the best vision or something. But just a sort of a sense of when you were ready to send that script out, did you send it to more than one production company? Not at the same time. That, yes. that wouldn't be a very good thing to do, I, I think. Okay. But okay. At, at the very beginning, there was another producer, but he wasn't very interested in the story, so I didn't insist in sending him the, the, okay. the, script, the finished script. So I, I wasn't very sure about it. But then I, I sent it to, to this producer, and that was all. The only one. Yeah. And what was it? I mean, at this stage in your career, you must have relationships with at least several, if not more than that, production companies. What made you send it to this production company first? It depends on the project. In this case, uh, I, I decided it because I felt that this producer 
was going to to trust the story and to like the story because the story is very, uh, as I told you, it, it's told in a very personal way. It's like a, the story is told like a diary of the main character. It's like a, like I I was speaking through the character. That's not right because I, I'm not like the character, but the way it's told is a very strange way. So um, I thought this producer was going to like this way of t telling the story. Yeah. And the story is a hard one. It's not an easy story, you know? Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. And was there any thought into um, just doing something that was sci-fi? <laughs> like, it was just, this was the story you wanted to tell? Or was there some thought process that sci-fi scripts are scripts that can get funded and can find an audience? Um. <coughs> that could be right. That could be true. But um, when I wrote this story, I, I wasn't thinking about uh, how to move it or if, it's, if it was going to be produced or not. Mm -hmm. Actually, I thought that wasn't going to be produced ever. So I was very free when I wrote the story. I felt very free. Mm -hmm. And the story itself took the shape of a sci-fi movie. Actually, I have to say that I don't think about this movie as a sci-fi movie, because for me, it's a drama. But part of this drama is set in the future. So that makes the movie a sci-fi movie. Mm -hmm. But that's the only one, the only thing, because it's a drama of people that would like to live and to feel and to love, and that's all. Yeah, um, yeah. So. Perfect. Do you know what the release schedule is going to be like? Um, how can people see Real Live? Sorry? Uh, do you know what the release schedule is going to be like? How can people see this movie? Do you know when it's going to be released? It's going to be released on theaters. On the, uh, Sorry, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it's 29, September 29th. Okay. And then on VOD, uh, the October the 3rd or the 4th. Okay. I'm not sure. Sorry. No, no, no. Because that's... I'm in Spain working yeah. in a new movie. <laughs> I'm not very sure. Yeah, yeah, no, no <laughs> But I think that's the, the proper uh, thing. Yep, perfect, perfect. Um, and I just like to wrap up the interviews by asking the guests how people can follow along with what you do. If you're on Twitter, Facebook, if you have a blog, anything you're comfortable sharing, you can just tell us that now. I'll round it up and put it in the show notes as well. Uh, I have. Anything, but I feel like an old man now because I have my email and nothing yep. more. But I, I can give the page, the website of my agents. They are the agents of a, a few Spanish directors. And um, this is the, the best way to, to know about me. Okay. And I, I will link to the show. I will link to your IMDb page and I'll link to... Um, ah, perfect. Yeah, and I'll link to the... I'm sure the, there's some sort of a website or Facebook page for the movie and I'll link to that as well. Perfect. So, perfect. Mateo, I really appreciate the um, coming on and talking with me today. Uh, okay, thank you very much. A quick plug for the SYS Screenwriting Analysis Service. It's a really economical way to get a high quality professional evaluation on your screenplay. When you buy our three pack, you get evaluations at just $67 per script for feature films and just $55 for teleplays. All the readers have professional experience reading for studios, production companies, contests, and agencies. You can read a short bio on each reader on our website, and you can pick the reader who you think is the best fit for your script. Turnaround time is usually just a few days, but rarely more than a week. The readers will evaluate your script on six key factors concept, characters, structure, marketability, tone, and overall craft, which includes formatting, spelling, and grammar. Every script will get a grade of pass, consider, or recommend, which should help you roughly understand where your script might rank if you were to submit it to a production company or agency. We can provide an analysis on features or television scripts. We also do proofreading without any analysis. We will also look at a treatment or outline and give you the same analysis on it. So if you're looking to vet some of your project ideas, this is a great way to do it. We will also write your logline and synopsis for you. You can add this logline synopsis service to an analysis, or you can simply purchase this service as a standalone product. As a bonus, if your script gets a recommend and a reader 
from a reader, you get a free email and fax blast to my list of industry contacts. This is the exact same blast service I use myself to promote my own scripts, and it's the same service I sell on the website. It's a great way to get your script into the hands of producers who are looking for material. So if you want a professional evaluation of your screenplay at a very reasonable price, check out www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. Again, that's sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. In the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing writer, director, actor, producer, and even editor Griff first. He recently did a film called Cold Moon, and we talked through that process. It was based on a book, um, which Griff went out and he optioned. Then he wrote the screenplay based on that book. Then he raised the money for the film and then produced the film. So we talked through every aspect of how this film came together, approaching the author, optioning the book, writing the script, and then raising the money and, and making the film. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. Anyway, that's the show. Thank you for listening.